A very good day to all you patriots out there, and welcome back to Tall Ship Tuesday. Now, when last we met, I told you the tale of uh, Jonathan Pitcher's brief but glorious command as Captain of Providence. Now, during that time, our sloop engaged in her first true naval battle and won quite the triumph over the brig Lucy. Alas, Captain Pitcher was gravely injured during that battle, and so when Providence put in at Bedford for some much needed repairs, Captain Pitcher went ashore as well, leaving Providence without a captain. Since taking command of Providence, I had found Lieutenant John Pitt Rathbun to be an exceedingly able sailor, having spent much of his youth aboard a ship, and also a man of character. Now, Pitcher was my first lieutenant and Rathbun my second, but I must confess it was Rathbun to whom I turned most. Uh, we were nearly the same age, Rathbun being slightly my elder, I suppose I saw in him several qualities that I might wish to find in a brother, or in one's most particular friend. I did value his skill so highly that I avoided sending him aboard other ships as prize master when I could, and when I left Providence this November to take command of Alfred, I took him with me. When I disembarked at Boston, I had determined to uh, try to do what I could in order to ensure his rise in the Continental Navy. Now, it is not always certain who will receive appointments, you know. Uh, in my own experience, uh, those in power are much more inclined to give promotions to those with whom they are well acquainted. The first Naval Committee of the Continental Congress consisted of three members. Silas Dean of Connecticut, John Langdon of New Hampshire, and Christopher Gadsden of South Carolina. Uh, you'll recall that my first voyage with the Continentals was as First Lieutenant aboard Alfred under Captain Dudley Saltonstall. Now, his wife was Silas Dean's sister. Cabot was under the command of uh, Captain John Hopkins, son of Commodore Essex Hopkins, who was, by the by, the brother of Stephen Hopkins, the governor of Rhode Island, and would you believe it, a member of the Continental Congress. <sighs> oh dear. Well, it is true, this is the way it is in many other countries, but I did hope America might be a wee bit better. I do suppose that my own appointment, that of a relatively unknown Scot, shows that we are improving in some matter, but nonetheless, I did not wish to leave John's future up to chance if I could do something to help. And so when I had business with the Continental Committee in this previous spring in Philadelphia, I had contrived to have uh, our good lieutenant deliver letters from Commodore Hopkins to the committee in order that they might become uh, more well acquainted. Now, I did not know if they would see in him what I saw in him, or else they would see in him uh, perhaps this relatively unknown figure under the, with nothing but the uh, approval of his superior officer when perhaps somebody's son might be expecting a commission. And so, I had no idea what they might do. Uh, I myself had been passed over several times in a recent rearranging of the naval superiority, um, which is all fine and good, but uh, suffice it to say, I did not completely trust the process. However, thankfully, good sense prevailed and uh, Captain Rathbun, as he would now be known, was given command of Providence shortly after I was given command of Ranger. Uh, now, I'm certain you'll be very interested to know how Captain Rathbun's command goes from here on out, and I shall certainly keep you up to date as I receive letters from him and from his acquaintances. Uh, until that time comes, I do thank you very much for joining us today, and I bid you adieu.